Hey you, Mariam here, welcome to my channel or welcome back. In today's video, I am going to go over all the latest makeup that I just received in PR, try it on, give you my first impression, a verdict at the end, and of course, a look. This very easy, but kind of festive, everyday, bronzy look for the holiday season is what I like to call it. So if you are interested in trying out all this new makeup with me, just keep on watching and let's do this together. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see all of my Wednesdays and and Sunday's videos and now let's get to it testing and reviewing the latest makeup that I just received in PR here we come the first product that I'm going to test out today is actually a primer and it is the new essence my skin perfector tinted primer with the instant blur effect and a natural matte finish I picked out two shades from the PR package that you may remember from my drunk unboxing with Lee. So today I wanna go for the 10 light beige or perhaps 20 nude beige. I'm not sure which one of them is going to suit me best, but I'll try out both and see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do is just squeeze out a small amount. Oh boy, okay. Onto my porous zones like that. It looks like it's one of those putty types of primers. So I'm gonna try the darker shade on my forehead and the lighter shades on the center of my face. I'm gonna use this Tati Beauty, I swear I forgot what this is called, little spongy thingy. And I'm gonna, wow, glide this over my skin. Wow, this is really an interesting kind of product. I definitely see how it instantly blurs and mattifies the skin. It does have a tint to it and the tint is flattering. So this number 10 light beige, it's not really adding a color. It's kind of just brightening my complexion overall, but you see how it applies? It applies rather heavily, kind of like a cream. This is my first time trying it out. Obviously you can tell that it's a lot lighter than my natural skin tone, but once it blends out, it seems to match. I'm also sensing a scent, kind of floral. I'm not really big on scents in makeup. I'm also not big on scents in general. I'm someone who doesn't really wear perfumey things too much. Very rare that I do. And it's only for a super special occasion. All right, on this side of the face, I have a few breakouts, as you can tell. These are just some uh, post Thanksgiving visitors on my face, but I feel like this primer kind of blurted a little bit. It's not as intense as it was before. All right, let's try out the second shade. This shade I like a little bit better because it's blending in with my skin even better, but granted my forehead is very smooth. I don't have any pores on my forehead. I don't have any fine lines. And so there's really nothing for it to perfect. I wish the rest of my face was like my forehead. Okay, so, so far this is promising. I can't say that I like it or hate it. Let's see how foundation glides over it. For today, I have two different foundations to test out. I have the new Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation and concealer. Now this is new, new, like new, 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 new. I just got this in PR like maybe a couple of days ago. And so what this is, is an SPF 20 clean vegan buildable foundation with a natural luminous finish proven to refine and smooth the look of skin's texture instantly and over time. And it's inspired by Bare Minerals original loose mineral foundation SPF 15, which is their iconic number one best selling mineral foundation. Cool. I got the PR package right here. There's three foundations and three concealers. I should have probably tested them before I applied my primer, but you know, I'm not perfect. Second foundation that I want to test out is the new Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish Skin Caring Foundation. Now this has hyaluronic acid, vitamin C and E. So off the bat, I'm thinking this is a foundation that my oily AF skin might like just because it's got some hyaluronic acid, which helps keep my oils at bay. Also, it's got some skincare and vitamin components. All of that sounds really good to me. This is what the PR package looks like. Three shades plus hydrating serum primer. So what I'm gonna do right now is kind of test out some of these shades on maybe like the side of my jar something like that. So for the Bare Minerals, I usually wear a golden medium in the powder foundation. So I'm hoping that this golden medium is the same shade. Oh my God, this packaging is like kind of annoying. But this one in the package looks super duper yellow. Test it to my neck. It's kind of even more yellow than my neck, I would say. There's a storm going on outside my window. So if you hear it, don't be alarmed. All right, I'm really not loving this golden medium 14 on my neck. I mean, it kind of blended in okay, but I don't know. It's not really feeling up my alley just yet. Let's try a different shade. I also have neutral ivory. And this is much peachier, but also blends out kind of nice. 
Okay, and last but not least, we've got medium beige. Ooh, baby, this one is pink. That is real pink. No way, Jose. I'm gonna need to go for the golden medium like I initially thought. Perhaps I'll just choose like a neutral concealer or something just to balance it out. But anyway, I'm gonna designate this side of my face as the bare mineral side. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this original liquid mineral foundation in the shade golden medium to the back of my hand first. Then I'm gonna use this included brush. Ooh, it's a nice little duo fiber kabuki. Love that. And I'm gonna stipple that to the side of the face and kind of just work that in. I really like how it looks on my forehead. I feel like the match is pretty good, but the rest of my face is so discolored compared to my neck and my forehead. There's so much redness and irritation and the skin is so thin there that it's not really showing a true representation of my color. So it's kind of hard for me to match the rest of my face, which is why I always like to match my neck or my forehead. But anyway, this foundation just applied like a dream. Let's see it up close. Really, really lovely. A little bit of cakiness happening here. I'm not sure if it's the combination of the primer and the foundation, there's like a little bit of settling into just my skin texture. So I'm not really loving that. Ah, and at second glance, when I'm looking at my forehead, this foundation is looking very, very streaky. So it's weird, definitely very weird. I'm gonna do a little close-up video just to show you what it looks like. It's just not looking too great. It's not really covering too much. Kind of emphasizing my pores here. And overall, it's just looking like it's laying on top of my skin rather than working with my skin. Hmm. But from afar, it looks so nice. It looks very luminous and very dewy. I'm gonna try just a little bit more with my Pat McGrath brush, which is very, very dense. So I'm hoping that this brush will be able to fix it. A little bit better, but honestly not great. I don't know, this foundation is kind of clinging to all of my skin imperfections. I'm gonna set that aside. Was not feeling that. All right, all right, let's move on to something a little bit more positive. Let's test out the second foundation, the Hyaluronic Acid Foundation from Elizabeth Arden. I've got three shades over here, a neutral, a warm, and another warm. I'm gonna test out the warm 330W Warm. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this shade. On my hand here, it's looking a little too pink to me. Let's try the 340W. That looks a lot better. All right, I think the 340W is gonna be the one. Better. Plopping some of that 340W onto the back of my hand. I'm gonna use that Pat McGrath brush just to spread everything out. All right, this foundation is also just a bit streaky upon application, even with this amazing brush that I love. But the coverage is definitely fuller. The shade may be a pinch light for my neck and also for my preference, but it's not bad overall. And the finish on camera is definitely very pretty. It's not covering up my acne scars here, but it's also not emphasizing my skin texture. So that's a good thing. This foundation does feel a little bit heavier on the skin. Like it actually feels like I'm wearing something on this side of the face, but it's supposed to be a skin care foundation hybrid. So I guess I'll just go along with it. The coverage here is a lot more matte than here, but it still has a little bit of dew. So it's not like a full on flat matte type of finish. It's just a little bit more satin, I would say. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. I'm just gonna use my beauty blender here to perfect some of the borders between the two foundations. And also try to fix this mess of a cake face that's happening on this side of the face. Oh, all right, for my concealer today, I guess let's test out this Bare Minerals original liquid mineral concealer. I'm gonna go for a neutral shade this time. So I'm gonna pick up the light medium 2.5N for neutral. Oh, it's really dark. I'm gonna close her out. All right, so this shade is just a pinch dark for my under eyes, so I'm gonna try the medium 3C, which is a cooler shade, and it's also a lot more pink. So let's see how that plays out. All right, 3C is just a little bit better, and because it has a lot of pink rather than yellow undertones, I feel like it's just better for the under eye, especially if you're covering up that darkness or discoloration. I wouldn't necessarily use this concealer to cover up imperfections because it is very, very liquidy and it's not super full coverage. Okay, next up, we have some new powders to test out. I have the Essence My Skin Perfector powder and I also have the one size translucent powder. Now this is a full size powder. I love the fact that it has this nice protective shield to keep the powder from spilling all over. Ooh, this is really cute. Instead of having the perforated dots disperse the powder, the one size powder, I don't know if you guys 
can tell, but it actually disperses through the slash of the OS, meaning one size, which I think is a little bit more fresh and innovative. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and disperse some of this powder into this pan. I'm gonna go ahead and take some powder onto my beauty blender, making sure no concealer has settled into my lines. I'm gonna bake this under eye, also the side of my nose, and just this whole triangle here from the corner of my eye to the corner of my nose and everything in between. I gotta say, this powder is very perfecting. Not only does it disappear into nothingness, it perfects the skin texture and it also perfects that foundation. So remember where I was saying this foundation was feeling very cakey to me on this side? Well, after applying it to my pore zones, it seems to have evened out those flaws and it's just making everything look a lot more perfected. I also really appreciate this big opening of the slash to disperse the powder because that actually allows me to save time instead of doing the salt shaker effect when nothing comes out. Gonna disperse just a little bit more powder, just like a smidgy poo more. And I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush. This one is from Wayne Goss. I'm gonna swirl it around and just like add that to the rest of my face. Does my face look two different colors? At first it was looking like two different colors because I definitely applied two different color foundations onto my face, but now I think with the powder and with the concealer, it's coming together for me. For my bronzer today, I'm just gonna go for this Charlotte T airbrush bronzer in the shade three Doré Tan. And I'm just gonna go ahead and warm up, or bronze up the sides of my forehead. So now this isn't a new product, but probably a shade that I haven't tried before. But I'm well familiar with the Airbrush Flawless powders, with the way that they glide and the way that they lay on the skin. I think it's a pretty great product. It's really easy to blend out, so even if you've applied too much, kind of like I did to this area right here, you can easily just brush it out and blend it out. It has a very forgiving type of finish. We also have this new Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlighter. This is something I haven't really seen before. And holy shit. It's massive. I believe this is actually for Charlotte's holiday collection. So it's like limited edition packaging. I will get to that in a sec. First, I actually wanna perfect my brows real quick. So for my brows today, I'm gonna to use this APU Haru Tattoo Brow. Now this brow marker I got from Yes Style, and I did use it once or twice before, but I always used it after I've applied my brow gel. So today I actually want to use it the way that it's intended to be used, which is before the brow gel. So what I'm going to do is trace the shape of my brows, fill them in, and today I want to round them out instead of arching them. And I also kind of want to soften that line just a little bit. Like that looks great. This is supposed to be a long lasting brow tattoo marker, but I don't think it's as long lasting as I want it to be. I think it may only be like a 24 hour thing, not like a several day thing. So if you guys have any favorite brow tattoo products that are truly long lasting, like 72 hour or even a six day type of tattoo, let me know and I will test out your faves. Cause as much as I love doing brows, I feel like with thicker brows like mine, you don't need too much and sometimes just having an already tattooed on brow saves so much time. So I'm looking for a product that will save me some time and in turn will save you some time. So if anyone has any recommendations, please do share. Now that I've applied the brow tattoo, just gonna brush it out a little bit to kind of blend out the product throughout the width of my brow and also throughout the length. I like that these Asian brow tattoo products or brow marker products aren't super duper pigmented. So they always look very natural to me. I really do like the color and I really do like the effect. Next, I'm just gonna take my Benefit 24 hour brow setter and instead of gluing my brows to my head the way that I've been doing, I just wanna groom them and again, round them out a little bit. I'm not going for a super thick boy brow effect today. Instead, I just want something more clean and more groomed. Okay, brows looking very innocent today. Not so intimidating. I'm ready for the eyes. For the eyes today, I'm very excited to be testing out the new Eternal Eclipse by Lunar Beauty from my boo Manny. So now this palette here is actually from his holiday collection. Look at this stunning packaging. It's so cool. This is beautiful. So it's my first time opening it up and looking at it. You guys, I am here for this moodier holiday palette. Hello. This is me. I am obsessed with these 
colors. They look so, so stunning. Wow, those shimmery shades, you guys. This is really, really gorgeous. I'm gonna prime my lids. Do I have a primer though? Probably not. So instead of primer, I'm just gonna use this Bare Minerals Concealer. I'm gonna blend that out with my finger. Just gonna create that nice, even base across my lid on all the way up to my brow. And then once again, I'm gonna take that one size powder. And I'm gonna create my own primer by actually setting my concealer. Yes, you guys, this works, and it's a great trick for oilier lids. <laughs> Cat hair everywhere. Cat hair everywhere. All right, so what I want to do is I want to grab like a neutral shade, perhaps this sandstorm right here, just a pinch of that sandstorm, I'm using Laura Lee Los Angeles L18 brush, and I'm kind of going in rather heavily, I'm just shading this area right above my crease and I'm staying somewhat on a straight edge. I'm not really lifting that towards the tail end of the brow, and I'm also not rounding, out, rounding it out too much. You guys, I have a hard time speaking sometimes in the morning. All right, so that just added a little bit of definition that I really needed and wanted. Next, with the same brush, I'm gonna go for a slightly deeper shade, this one next to it called Summer Sky. This is just like a plumier brown. Looking down into my mirror, I'm gonna place this color a little bit lower but do the exact same thing, except this time I'm actually hitting my lash line as well. So just shading the outer portion of my lid past my crease and just keeping that nice, easy blend. Love that for me. I love palettes that are interesting, that have depth, but also have enough neutral shades for a cohesive neutral look. And this palette honestly is a perfect example of that. Look at all those neutral shades, but then look at all the interesting cooler shades and all the super awesome metallics. I don't know about you, but those are the types of colors that I can vibe with on a personal level and not just for a YouTube video, but also in my everyday life. I'm gonna take a little bit of that same shade, Summer Sky, on a very dirty Laura Lee Los Angeles brush. I'm gonna shade just the outer portion of my lower lash line. She done. This all looks very, very interesting, but I'm not in this mood today. Let's do a little bit of flare. Look at that. And let's add a bit of that to the inner corner and just to like the inner part of my lid. I feel like that was really nice. Very subtle, but very necessary. Kind of having a hard time applying this eyes shadow with this finger. It's just a little bit unnatural for me. So don't think I'm struggling. I'll just use the wrong finger to pick up the shade. All right, I'm gonna use whatever's remaining on this finger and just slap a bit of that sparkle under my brow arch. And that feels very, very fresh to me. Let's see, what else do I need on my face right now? Maybe a bit of this desert sky. Let's try it. Desert sky is a lot more bronzy, but it's so cool. I'm gonna add that kind of close to my lash line and just to the movable part of my lid, but more so to the outer portion, kind of like that. You absolutely don't have to do this with a finger, but I'm just testing shadows and I want to see how they wear, how they blend. So far, I'm really liking this. Like, it's just so good. I'm gonna add that desert sky to my lower lash line just for a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of pop, a bit of fallout with that one, but not a biggie. I like it. Yeah, this is definitely a cool palette and something that I want to continue using and testing out. But this is just like an everyday, kind of shimmery, easy, slightly smoky, pulled out kind of look. I'm feeling it. Next up, let's try this Menage a Moi, Menage a Moi palette from ColourPop. I haven't even looked at it, so this is my first time opening it up. It is very, very rosy, pretty, not really my vibes. So I'm gonna close her out. For my cheek today, I have two options. I have the Menage a Moi blush, also from ColourPop. Very, very pink. Not my mood today, so again, closing her out. Also have this trio from Laura Mercier's holiday collection. Remember the ballet one? And there's a really pretty peachy blush in here, but again, feeling like I need something different. Let's see. I also have this stuffed stocking from Charlotte Tilbury. It has my name on it. And in it, we have a lot of holiday goodies. We have some luxury eye palettes. Woo! We have the gorgeous velvet brush set. Also Film Star Bronze and Glow limited edition. Some lippies. Ooh, lipstick and liner duo. Love that. Jewel lips. Ooh, diamond glosses. All right, I'm gonna have to go through this a little bit later, but what I'm looking for specifically, a blush is actually nowhere to be found. So I guess let's dip into this Laura Mercier, even though it's not the color that I was 
feeling on my mind today. It's the color that I have available for me right now. And typically this is the color that I would reach for. I'm just thinking I want something a little bit moodier for today's look, but you know what? I'm gonna have to make it work. This is the mood. It's actually a really, really gorgeous shade. It works really well with my skin tone and with this eye look. All right, very pretty blush indeed. I'm sorry that I wasn't drawn to you, but you're definitely drawing me in right now. Opening night cheek palette is what this is called. For the lips, we have tons of options, like a ton of options. I have these lip sets from Dose of Colors. One is called On Repeat, and the second one is called Cork. So these, I believe, are existing colors in Dose of Colors collection, but they're kind of like set up with a lip liner and a gloss and a liquid lip for the holidays. So I already know what that's about. I'm really curious about these um, jewel lips from Charlotte T. I actually have a Pillow Talk 2, which is not the usual Pillow Talk shade that I go for. I usually go for the original shade, but this one is supposed to be more geared for uh, medium skin tones. So let's see. It's a little bit darker than how I like my natural lip liner to appear but it's not a deal breaker and it absolutely still works. Okay, so now for my lip color today, let's open up these Jewel Lips easy to apply dazzling diamond glosses. I've got three shades here. Ugh, oh my God, they're so stunning. We've got a champagne diamonds. Look at that sparkle, holy sh. We've got a blushed gold. And the third one we have is called Opal Magic. Oh my God. Like these are ridiculously gorge. Okay, so this uh, blushed gold is kind of the obvious choice, but I also really do love the champagne diamonds, even though this is a lot more monochromatic with my skin tone and with the blush and with the bronzer in the eyes, but let's try. Blushed gold is stunning. I'm gonna keep it. Next up, I'm gonna curl my lashes using my Laura Mercier lash curler that I love so much. I need to make a video of my current ride or dies because this lash curler is definitely going in that pile of products. All right, so now I'm looking for a mascara. Ah, I know where. Ooh, we got a Smashbox PR package, and in it here we have the Full Exposure Mascara, Glossy Volume and Lift. Ooh, that scares me, because a glossy mascara is probably not gonna be a friend of mine, but let's see. Well, the wand is super thick, so that's great. Meh, it's nothing special. I feel like creamy mascaras don't really grab onto the lashes the way that liquid mascaras do. I feel like it's also kind of heavy for my type of lashes, and so they always end up straightening the curl. That's exactly what's happening here. Not really a fan. All right, so for the highlighter, I have so many different choices. I have this new Bobbi Brown Lux Gilded Highlighter in Foiled Petal. This one's really pretty. Kind of reminds me of like a lighter version of NARS Orgasm, if it was a highlighter. Next, we also have the Charlotte Tilbury that I showed you guys. So I'll probably definitely end up going with this one just because I think it's the most interesting. Lastly, I have the highlighter in the Laura Mercier Trio, which is also very nice. So I'm actually gonna swatch them all. So here we have the Laura Mercier, kind of barely there. Here we have the Bobbi Brown. Wow, very, very, very smooth and promising. And the final one, is the Charlotte T, which looks the most shiny to me. Not gonna waste any product. I'm gonna apply the Laura Mercier to the top of my cheekbone here. I'm gonna apply the pink Bobbi Brown one to the most protruding part of my cheek here. And then right in between to the top of my cheekbone, I'm going to add the Charlotte T, which looks so, so beautiful. Now that last part, I'm actually gonna do with a brush. Charlotte's highlighters have this really beautiful girl, girl glow from within. So I really love using them on not just my cheekbones, but also on my forehead if I need a little extra glow, on my nose bridge, on my chin, even on my collarbone if it's exposed. Got this liner from MAC, dual-ended liner from their holiday collection. And we've got two shades, basically dark spark and bitter in glitter, PowerPoint eye pencil. I think the brown has just a little bit of sparkle in it. So I'm gonna use just a tad of that brown just like shade lightly underneath my lower lash line. I'll also just add a pinch of definition to my top lash line and lift it slightly, kind of like that. 
And that's it you guys, that is my look. Kind of sparkly and very wearable. Holiday season, everyday makeup look. This is the kind of makeup that I typically gravitate towards during the month of December. It's something that makes me feel a little bit more festive and put together, but it's not anything over the top or anything that I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing anywhere. Let's go over everything that I tried. Let me share my thoughts. So first and foremost, the primer. This Essence My Skin Perfector went on kind of smooth. It definitely filled up the pores and it made my complexion overall smoother and just a little bit brighter, especially the lighter color that I used on the center of my face. However, I'm not sure if this primer was cooperating with the Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation. I felt like this was not a marriage. This was not a match made in heaven. This side of my face just felt a little too balmy, a little too cakey. I could still see the imperfections here. I could see some dry patches. It's just not the greatest combo. But furthermore, I really wasn't a huge fan of this foundation altogether. I felt like it went on very streaky. I didn't like the brush that came with this collection. The color was kind of off. It wasn't the same color as the original Bare Minerals Mineral Foundation, the powder one. And overall, I found it to be just kind of meh, kind of okay, but not really anything that I would reach for with excitement. On the other hand, the Elizabeth Arden Foundation definitely felt a little bit better. It was more full coverage. It went on a lot more smooth. It gave me the kind of finish that I'm used to seeing on my skin. However, it did feel a little bit heavier on the skin. It felt more like a mask. It felt more like a product on my face. But keeping in mind that this is a skincare foundation hybrid, that's kind of to be expected. Right now, both of these foundations are looking fairly good. I do like this side a little bit better than this side, even though this is the side where I'm breaking out kind of heavy. And I didn't even cover up my imperfections because I just want to show you that this foundation does not cover up major imperfections like the ones that I had on my face. The reason why I think my face is looking okay actually is due to the fact that this one size powder is really awesome. It's not my first time trying it, I will admit, even though this is a first impressions type of video, I did travel to Lee's mom for Thanksgiving and I brought the travel size of this powder with me. That's the powder that I was using throughout the weekend and I gotta say, I really, really like it. I like it for the under eye because it's very perfecting, it's very smoothing. I like it for the porous zones, again, because of the smoothing factors. And overall, I think it has great longevity. It definitely helps your makeup stay on longer, look smoother and fresher throughout the day. So this is a product that I'm gonna continue reaching for. I definitely think it's my favorite of the ones that I've mentioned thus far. The Bare Minerals Concealer isn't bad for the under eye if you don't have much to cover up, but it's not as full coverage as you would like, especially for someone who has a lot of discoloration or for someone who suffers from spots. This is not the type of concealer that I would use for spots like this. Charlotte T Bronzing Powder is great. I've talked about it before and I'll mention it again. The Haru Tattoo Brow is a product that I'm still kind of testing out and developing an opinion on. It's not as long lasting as I think it should be, but it still looks really great on the face. It definitely perfects the brows and it gives me that natural K-Beauty type of brow that I was going for. Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse Palette is a hit for me. You guys, this color story is perfect <laughs> for the kind of mood that I'm in this holiday season in 2020. Let's face it, we're not so festive this year as we were in 2019. And I feel like this color story just speaks more to my darker heart this year. This is just the kind of colors that I'm gravitating towards more. They're moodier, they're more sophisticated, and there's definitely a lot of textures which can help you play up your look on those days that you are feeling festive. I'm gonna continue using this one, and I really, really, really like this very neutral but bronzy, sparkly makeup look that I created with it. Next up, Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara in full disclosure, this was not a hit for me. I don't even see my lashes in my monitor anymore. Are they even still there? It was kind of just an okay product. Perhaps if you have already beautiful long full lashes, this is something that you can use. But for someone like me, it's not the kind of formula that I typically reach for. Charlotte Tilbury Jewel Lip Glosses are so Stunning. The formula is amazing. My lips are not sticking together like they do with most glosses, so I'm a fan. This Laura Mercier Opening Night Trio with the blush highlighter and little shimmer bronzer thing is also really cute. I like it. Can't really say anything negative about any of the products that I've tried today. Everything was working for me, except for the foundations, which 
were kind of just okay. So with that said, this is the roundup of the new products that I just received in PR. Let me know what your thoughts are, comment below, and tell me what you wanna see next. I know there's a lot of holiday collections happening and I definitely am feeling like I'm due for some of those best of videos that are coming up. I also have a faves and fails coming up, so be on the lookout for that. And definitely, definitely, definitely more giveaways. So keep glued, you guys. And on that note, I am going to zoom on out so that you can check out my next couple of videos, one that you may like, and my most recent video that you probably didn't even watch yet. So click on it. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.